four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Vehicles pitching downrange. Pressures are nominal. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower, lifted off from Cape Canaveral Falcon Space Force Station. We just heard the call out that the vehicle is supersonic. We're currently going to throttle down the engines in preparation for Max Q coming Max up. Max Q. In, oh, there we heard it. So that was the moment of greatest aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle Yeah, so we just hit the moment of maximum aerodynamic pressure or stress on the rocket. This is the 137th mission of the year uh, so far for Falcon 9, right? Second of the year. Over the next six minutes, it will go to a level of sun-synchronous orbit. And what it basically does is orbit in that sun-synchronous orbit, low Earth orbit, uh, for about an hour. And then after an hour, it will deploy the satellites. But because of limited ground coverage, we won't actually have a strong video feed to see much of that deployment this time around, but routine, textbook guy and Alex, it's become normal. Main engine cutoff coming up in just under 30. Absolutely. Ed, just a quick question on this. We talked to Virgin Orbit the other day. The these are before. these small yeah. micro satellites that it's also in the business uh, the of launching. How crowded is this one. space going to become? There are different options no for launch, kind of launch site. but clearly the there is going to be a huge market here. Drone ship landing. Yeah, there is. And the competition is already growing. You know, I, I talked earlier about some of the startups putting satellite on board. You know, Virgin is moving into this space with a very different delivery mechanism. Um, SpaceX does corner the market because they launch with such regularity. You can go onto SpaceX.com, anyone can, and try and get a spot on their rise. But of course, they've got other projects, which opens the door. We know Blue Origins have uh, ambitions in this space. And one stock to watch, a company's watch, is Rocket Lab, that are really ramping up their own activity. And even though they're kind of operating out of New Zealand and the United States, they're winning NASA contracts. So SpaceX has competition, but because it launches so often, it's basically the main side. option that people go to. The, the, the video is tremendous, uh, the live shots yes. that we're looking at. Ago. Truly tremendous. Ed, I feel like you said something really important earlier in which you said, look, and routine. The fact that we can get this to, to be something border. like look routine is really quite important for the development of whether you're going into deep space, the moon, high orbit, or low Earth orbit. Yeah, well, for our global audience out there, when we prepare for these launches, we always talk about, well, what's going to happen? What are the key times? But with any launch, there's inherent risk. It's highly calculated. Much of the process is autonomous. If the computer detects an issue before launch, it shuts down. But from the moment of liftoff, anything could happen. These are very volatile propellants, which the booster uses to breach Earth's atmosphere. But 137 consecutive launches has changed the game. You know, the regular Clarity is amazing. That booster that we saw on falling, see side, on the left-hand side falling back down to Earth, mm -hmm. I think it's done seven missions prior, but Falc uh, SpaecX has Falcon 9s that have done 10. You know, 10 missions in 26 months, launching every 70 days or so, is quite a feat. Yeah. Ed, right. in terms of how cost is going to be affected, as you say, uh, around a million to get a small satellite up into space right now. How quickly do people think that cost will come down? It's really interesting. Uh, by the way, just on the right-hand side of your screen, you saw the fairing halves deploy. So this is the nose of the rocket. You don't see it now, but basically the nose of the rocket jettisons off and it exposes the satellite. So that's what you saw a moment ago. You have to remember, SpaceX has been a bit iffy on its economics, right? Its business model. It's talked about being profitable, but also Elon Musk has talked about how they're a long way from being cash flow positive on the Starlink business, their space-based internet. You know, they are launching regularly, charging revenue for this launch business, carrying, carrying other people's payloads, and they're making money. They're making money on the NASA contracts, but at the same time, they're in growth mode on their other business, Starlink. Um, so it's interesting to learn in the future how those two interact, but volume, scale, economy, 
economies of scale. This is what Elon Musk yep. has talked about, and that's what they need to bring the cost down. Um, Ed, uh, also we've heard Elon Musk even say that SpaceX could go bankrupt if it can't ramp up its engine production. So to your point, a huge spread into what actually is, is going to happen for these companies, which I think begs the broader question is what is the addressable market for space? Yeah, yeah Alex, this is a point you and I have discussed endlessly over the last year, right? And. Elon Musk sometimes contradicts himself, but he's been pretty transparent on this point, that the launch business, what we're talking about on the screen here, sending stuff into space for other people, he says that's a $3 billion a year business. Now, the data generated in space is a different story. He sees Starlink, this space-based internet system. SpaceX operates its own constellation of satellites, beaming internet down to remote corners of the Earth, being a $30 billion a year business. But they have to build up the constellation capacity in Space. And he's talked about an investment of five to ten billion dollars before they are cash flow positive in that business, and maybe as much as thirty billion dollars all told for the complete network. So there's a long way to go here. It's a nascent industry, um, but the forecasts from Wall Street analysts, everyone's trying to get in on on this space, commenting on this space. But the forecast is for the money to be made in the data, not blasting things into orbit. In terms of how crowded it is going to become up there, in order to make that data system work, you need to have a lot of small satellites uh, floating around the world. My question is, as we start to see more and more stuff being put into low Earth orbit, we've got these satellites up there, they're going to be there for communication, but there's all kinds of other ones as well. I, what is the danger uh, that actually that we don't have the precision to be able to keep these satellites perfectly positioned and avoid the debris that there is out there? Has begun. Nerding out with Guy Johnson yeah, on Bloomberg Television oh, yeah. talking it's about space environmentalism. I never yeah. thought I'd see the day. But SpaceX and Elon Musk have come into crit criticism from lots of parties. There is a worry about space debris. For example, I talked to you about the fairing halves jettisoning off. Those don't get recycled, right? We talk about the reusability of Falcon 9. Not all of the entire space system, the rocket, is reused. Some of it ends up in space. There is a worry about the density of satellites in space. But Elon Musk and SpaceX have pushed back very hard on this. They're engaged with the agencies. They're engaged with astronomers. They don't want to block the view of astronomers of space. They want to work with astronomers. So it's something that they say they're conscious of, but it is a concern uh, for the international scientific community um, and something that's being uh, discussed at governmental and agency level. I just update our audience here. SpaceX has launched its third transport mission from Cape Canaveral uh, in Florida. Um, you are looking at a live shot of that in space and as well as the booster uh, coming back down. Ed, can you just refresh us as to what we're looking at right now? Twice the speed of Yeah, so you can see those kind of aft flaps at the bottom of the booster. It, it, as it approaches a distance of a few thousand feet above the Earth, it gives an initial burst. That's what you're seeing. So it's essentially in free fall and then starts to stabilize itself. We're getting closer and closer to, to Earth. A aboard the Falcon 9 are these... I'm going to actually... Be quiet, guys, because this is a beautiful moment. I just want you got the audience to hear it. It's like CGI. As you heard from the call out there and from the cheers behind me, uh, we have successfully landed this Falcon 9 for the 10th time.